Good morning and welcome to Worship OSLC. I'm Pastor Rob James, your senior pastor. Grateful for Pastor Scott Stolberg, our assisting minister, and all of our musicians and those behind the scenes that make worship happen for us each week. It's good that we can be together, even virtually. I do want to say that uh, we hope that it, and pray that it was a great week for you. But if there's anything going on that we can put on the prayer chain, please simply reach out, call the office, let us know uh, so we can pray with you. If there's other ways we can walk with you, support you, please know that we're here as a community to do that however we best can. So please let us know if there's anything going on that we can pray with you or pray for you during. A few announcements we want to highlight this morning. Uh, First, to say welcome. We're glad you're here. Whether you're a member of this church and have been here for years or you're just joining us online, we're glad that you're connected and glad that you're part of this ministry today. Uh, You hopefully, if you're a member of OSLC or have signed up for emails, received an email or saw on Facebook this week a video update from me on on why we're going to continue with virtual worship at this time through this COVID-19 pandemic. I know that it might not be the news that you wanted to hear, but I hope that you receive that knowing that it comes out of a place of faithfulness and trusting that God is continuing to hold us together and lead us through these challenging times as we look to what is yet to come. This is pre-recorded. I just let the secret out of the bag. And so I'm saying this now, but you're watching it on Sunday. We should be having our annual meeting in the parking lot at 11. So if you didn't get an email or a text or uh, see it on Facebook or check the voicemail by calling to hear that weather has changed it, then plan on being here at 11 a.m. You're going to simply pull into the parking lot, uh, park your car. We're going to tell you what station to tune your radio to. We'll bring you a ballot. Uh, and you can be a part of our annual meeting at 11 a.m. We'd love for you to be here as we give thanks for outgoing leaders, elect new leaders, vote on our budget for 2021, and just share some other news as we're in ministry together as our Savior's Lutheran Church. Lent is coming. That's the season that leads us up to Easter. Kicks off on Ash Wednesday, which is on February 17th this year. Lots of announcements about this in your This Week that you should hopefully received an email. Ash Wednesday will have a virtual service like this one that'll post at noon on that day, so you can watch it at noon or any time after. We're also going to have an opportunity for you to drive up to the portico between noon and 7. We're going to have some bonfires. We're going to invite you into a brief Ash Wednesday litany, liturgy, uh, where you'll then confess your sins and, and burn those in the fire as you hear those words that we're used to hearing on Ash Wednesday, that you are dust and to dust you shall return. So invite you to plan on being with us for Ash Wednesday. Uh, With that, we have Lent devotionals, uh, Steadfast Love, devotional by Henry Nouwen, uh, words of Henry Nouwen. So you can pick that up in the office. Also, we have Lent in the bag. This isn't just for families with Sunday school kids. Anybody who wants to participate is welcome. Check out your This Week. We do ask you to register just so we make sure we have enough supplies, but we'd love to get you that Lent in a bag to help you journey through these 40 days, this season of Lent uh, together community. And then Wednesday nights, uh, not in your this week yet, but I'm sure it'll be in there next week and was in your crosstalk this month. Uh, Wednesday nights, the rest of Lent, I invite you to join me at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. We'll have a time of prayer, scripture reading, brief reflection, and most importantly, a time of some conversation together as we go through Lent uh, as a community. Last thing I want to highlight, other stuff you can check out, but last thing I want to highlight Uh, Mission of the Month has been Playtown, our preschool here at Our Saviors. Just exciting stuff going. We just met today to plan on how we're doing virtual open houses and how we're getting the word out that this is a great place for our three and four-year-olds in our community to come and learn about ABCs and one, two, threes and how much Jesus loves them. So would love for you to help us spread that word as you see posts on Facebook or if you know somebody looking for a preschool, let them know that Playtown would be a great option. If you've never seen the space, I know you maybe saw this last week, but I want to invite you to go on a quick tour and watch this Playtown video. Hi, I'm Miss Amy from Playtown Preschool, where learning is fun. I'd like to give you a tour of our classroom. This is a circle time area. This is where we gather together to start our day with the Pledge of Allegiance, what day of the week is it, and the weather report. We do stretching and morning prayers. At other times of the day, we come back to the circle time area for stories, songs, and a group game. Here are the work tables. We practice skill building with three children at a time. We work on writing with their pencils held properly, recognizing letters, letter sounds, recognizing numbers and learning to count and other skills needed for kindergarten. 
Each child sits in a different spot each day so that they have a chance to become friends with everyone in the classroom. These two spots are the art areas where children can be creative. We have planned art projects that we work on with three children at a time for their cutting, gluing, and coloring skills. This is our library and listening center. Here children can read books or listen to stories on CDs. Puzzles and puppets are also in this area to encourage vocabulary, a sense of achievement, and hand-eye coordination. Our science area. Here children can explore and learn about our physical world through play. Right now we have a fish and a frog as our class pets. Another job we share is watering plants. We like to watch and learn while the plants grow from seeds. This is our dramatic play area. Here the children can have fun using their imagination with props. The theme in this area relates to the time of the year and is changed monthly. This is our construction area. Here with everyone working and cooperating together, great cities and train routes are built. This is our math and cognitive and manipulative area. The toys in this area are here to help teach skills through playing. Here we have counting bears, magnet letters, shape, and size sorting. This is the quiet area, the place where someone goes when they need to relax or be alone for a few minutes. This is a cozy area with calming toys and stuffed animals. Our playground and gym are used daily for gross motor skills and letting out extra energy. All of these areas, the children are learning important social skills. We work on how to be a good friend, how to wait, be patient, how to listen to others, gain confidence, and taking care of our room. Drop off time will be at 8 a.m. and pick up will be at 1145 this coming school year. This will give your child more time to learn, make friends, and have more teacher contact time than most half day programs. If you have any questions or you'd like to register your child for next year, just call us at 815-399-0531 or email playtown at oslcrockford.com. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Playtown Preschool, where learning is fun. We begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in each of us the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. Amen.
Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or presumes to speak in a name a word that I have not commanded, the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. 
You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear, fear of the Lord, Lord is the beginning, beginning of wisdom. wisdom. All, All who practice this have a good understanding. understanding. God's, God's praise endure forever. forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possesses knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as, all, as to the eating of the food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom all we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think that the food they eat as food offered to an idol. As their conscience, being weak, is defiled, food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possesses the knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it's weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fail. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit who moves in and through us with every breath we take. Amen. 
Well, I'm committed to one take. If you watched last week's uh, and read the comments on Facebook as we worshiped together, I told you that it took five takes. So I'm committed this week to one take, and that means you might see some mistakes, but I got to keep going and get this word out. It's good for us to be in this word again as we continue in the gospel of Mark in this first chapter. If you were with us last week, you know that we're right here in the beginning of the gospel. We, of course, have four gospels, those books of the Bible that tell us about Jesus' earthly ministry, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark is the shortest, and it starts out quick. It doesn't have the Christmas story that we're used to. It just jumps right in. So we're still in chapter 1 as we get to Jesus' earthly ministry. Remember last week, Jesus called those first disciples saying, follow me and I will make you fish for people. They dropped everything. They left their nets and their family and they followed him. And now we move into the very next verse. Here we are in Jesus' first public act, casting out an unclean spirit or demon out of a man in the synagogue. It's not something that we're used to talking about in our context, not language that we use often. It might be a bit strange, but if you think it's strange reading about it, imagine being those guys who witnessed it. They were fishermen just a moment ago. They leave everything to follow, and this is their first experience, the first thing they see from Jesus. They were astounded when they heard him teach. They named the authority that they could hear in him. It's a new authority. It's fresh. It's different than the scribes who speak from their place of authority by simply knowing the law. They hear it in his words, but then they witness it in his actions. He, Jesus, has an authority, an exousia in the Greek, that they have not witnessed What they are witnessing is that Jesus' authority comes from God. His authority brings blessing through the healing of others. We're used to giving people a certain respect because of the authority of their title. But Jesus had no title or position, nothing that the world could give to establish his authority. What he had that allowed others to see his authority came from God. Jesus' authority becomes a theme of the gospel of Mark. We'll see it throughout the gospel. For example, later this summer, we'll read that even the winds and the waves obey him because of his authority. It will be his claim of his divine authority that will lead to his death. Jesus has authority over what we see and even over that which we do not see. Jesus, by his authority, ushers in a new kingdom. Stephen Holtgren in his commentary says, Jesus' authority and kingdom ministry invite us to imagine a different world and to live towards it. So today, and as we spend time this year in the Gospel of Mark, it's a great question for us to ask. What authority does Jesus have in your life? It's not just a rhetorical question Ponder on that one. Maybe write it down to ask yourself again later. What authority does Jesus have in your life? It's an authority that we can't just simply read about, but that we have to experience. How have you witnessed Jesus' authority in your life and in the life of others? How has it transformed and shaped your life into who you are as a follower of Jesus today? Let me read these words by Steve Garnis Holmes in his poem titled, Authority. Let his word cut into you, not a proposition you should agree with, not a doctrine to believe, but a revelation that astounds with authenticity that rings, a scene of your soul, an opening that draws you in, a pool you look deep into until you fall. With love that overrules any authority on this earth, let it take your breath away and let it give you new breath. Let it uncover something in you. Let it, with authority, ask of you. Let it author a new story in you. What authority does Jesus have in your life? Does Jesus have authority over the demons that possess you? Osvaldo Vena, in his commentary for today, 
says, the demons that I'm talking about are those who possess us as a community, as a nation, and as members of the human race. They are intent on destroying us, and we need to cast them out. How? First, we have to name them. Second, we have to pray as Jesus did in Mark 9, 29, when he exercised the boy with the Spirit. Naming, naming the demons is a way to recognize that they exist. We start with the big one, unbelief, losing one's faith in God, and life is a sacred force and in our fellow human beings. It is the feeling that nothing can be done to solve our problems. Then, springing from this one, come the others in fearful company. Homophobia, racism, sexism, classism, religious and ideological intolerance, violence at home and at school, poverty, militarism, terrorism, war, greed, extreme individualism, globalization, out-of-control capitalism, media-infused fear that leads to paranoia, and governmental manipulation of information, to name just a few. In the name of Jesus, in the sacredness and safety of a community of faith, we don't just come to feel good, but we come to name our demons that we might be transformed by Jesus' authority. The more distress that we become by the naming might mean the deeper the demon is. If our knee-jerk reaction is aggravation, then it is well past time to fall on our knees in prayer. To be people of faith is to practice humility. Humility is to listen and to learn that we might put others' needs before our own wants. Our faith calls us to surrender, to surrender to Jesus' authority, to confess our sin of our focus on ourself, and to surrender to the way of love. Pastor Tara Beth Leach, in her soon-to-be-released new book, Radiant Church, Restoring the Credibility of Our Witness, says this, a radiant church loves as Jesus loves. We need to be a church that boldly loves as Jesus loves. A church that loves fearlessly, even when it is uncomfortable and scary. Even, even when loving as Jesus loves doesn't fit a particular political party. We need to be a church that leans towards mercy and kindness. I want the messy, the uncomfortable. I want to walk in the power of the Spirit to be emboldened to love in uncharted waters. I want to be the first to say I am wrong if it means loving as Jesus loves. I want to be a church that chooses love. We can work this all out with fear and trembling because we have love. We have Jesus. To let Jesus have authority in our life, yes, begins in prayer. Prayer that comes again and again and is ongoing but it means we will be willing to sacrifice for the sake of love of the other, love of the outcast and the ostracized, love of those who've had others wield their earthly authority over them, love that allows us to say, I am wrong, as we confess our sins and learn new ways, love that we cling to because we know it comes from the one who claims ultimate authority, Jesus the Christ. Siblings in Christ, Together, let's love the one who has an authority like that that we have never seen before. Amen.
and make music with the heavens we will see profess our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forest and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV or AIDS, those, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and in any need, especially Fred, Fred and Lois, Lois Gary, Gary, Bob, Bob Dave, Dave, Henry, Henry Marjorie, Marjorie, Lloyd, Lloyd and Nancy, Nancy John, John and Sally, Sally Carol, Dolores, Dolores Neil, Neil, Joan, Roberta, Roberta Marlon, Marlon, Mackenzie, Keith, Glendia, Paul, Ron, Marlene. We also pray for the families and friends of our saviors. Phyllis, Mike, Tim, Tim Kelly, Chad, Chad, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Jill, Jill, Darren, Darren Emily, Laura, Mike, Chris, Mike, Billy, Elijah, Glenn, Ava, Julie, Daryl. We also pray to comfort the families of Caroline Ramsell, who passed away on January 21st, and Mary McDuff, who passed away on January 23rd. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For the concerns of this congregation, those who travel, those absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism 
and thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord. Let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan has bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me, when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child. With arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered with the disciples, took bread, gave thanks to God for the gift, then broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the meal, he took the cup, gave God thanks for the gift, and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to commune at your home, whether you are by yourself or with loved ones. You can commune one another or commune yourself. Communing others, give them the bread and say the words, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then again with the cup, as you share in this meal, hear or share these words, take and drink. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Lamb of Lamb God, God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith until life everlasting. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of peace, to grow, share, love, and inspire. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Look unto him, your Savior, oh.